Hello, and welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. This is the last video for Chapter 2. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at how we can actually use Scala in the command line. Um, so far, we've been basically looking at general command line arguments uh, and, and the commands that we can give. Now we want to look at things that are specific to Scala. And so that's going to lead us into chapter 3 where we're act we'll actually start to program. So let's go ahead and let's open a terminal. Go into our main directory. We can look at the files that we have there. Uh, things that were there for since the, uh, um, the last video. So in order to run the, pro the to use Scala, the command that we'll use most of the time is just the command Scala. Uh, this has been installed here. This is not a def uh, standard uh, Linux command or anything like that. This is a program that, that you have to install if you have your, your own setup, uh, and it has been installed on the virtual machine. Now, if you just run Scala and you don't give it any arguments, it will drop you into what is called the read evaluate print loop or the REPL. Um, so read, evaluate, print loop, uh, REPL, which looks like this. And you can see it tells you here that you can type in colon help to get uh, various options for, for help. Uh, we're going to use the colon quit to, to exit out. Uh, in the next chapter, we'll start typing in some commands here. And using this, you get to type in one command at a time uh, and uh, uh, actually have a have it print back out the result of, of uh, expressions um, or to execute statements. We'll go into the details of what that means in the next chapter. A second way to run this is to use Scala to run a script. Now in order to run a script we have to have a script file. So we're going to use VI and create a file called hello world.scala. Um, it's somewhat uh, of, a, of a tradition to make your first program be hello world, and so I'm not going to break with tradition here. So I'm going to edit this file called hello world.scala. It's a new file. We don't have it yet. I go into the insert mode. Remember in VI you start off in command mode and you have to hit either uh, an I, A, or capital R. The I or the A could be lowercase or capital, depending upon where you want to go. And now we need to type in a valid Scala command. Now we haven't really looked at any Scala commands yet, so I am just going to type one in without significant explanation. Uh, hopefully you can look at this and read what it, you know, it says print line, uh, has some parentheses here. We will talk about the significance of that. Uh, and inside of the parentheses is the thing that it's supposed to print. There's a set of quotes, of double quotes around these, and this says, hello world. Uh, so there's some punctuation in here, which is, I would say it's specific to Scala, though it turns out this punctuation is shared between, uh, among many, many different programming languages. But that's our first Scala program, that one line there. And as you can probably guess by reading it, it's going to print out hello world. So if I say that I want to right quit that, we can now look. And indeed, there is a hello world.scala. It's a small file. But now I can run Scala on that file. And what it actually goes through and, and does some work, uh, takes that file processes it in various ways, and then runs the, the result. And you can see here it prints out hello world. Now the details of what it did, uh, something we don't really have to go into that much, but it's related to the third way that you can run Scala. And this is something that we don't see until the second half of the book. For the first half of the book, we are going to be interacting with Scala either through the REPL, uh, or by running things as scripts. 
those are good for small programs and since we're starting off we're going to start off with small programs it's one of the reasons why Scala is is good for teaching this introductory stuff is that our hello world looked just like that okay there there wasn't much to it the scripting environment gives us the ability to write really small programs without having a lot of extra stuff in there what's referred to as boilerplate code um, However, it doesn't work when things start to get bigger and bigger. And so as your programs get bigger, you go to a different mode of using it. And there you also wind up invoking another command called Scala C. And what Scala C does is it takes the program, the, the file that you give it. Now, in this case, this one won't work. This is not a, a valid. And in fact, if I try it, I should get... Uh, error messages to spit out at me yeah um, so this the C here says that this is for this is the Scala compiler so the Scala compiler is supposed to take a properly formatted Scala class or object or trait those are terms that don't necessarily make sense to you now and we won't worry about them really until the second uh, half of the book but this would take it and convert it from a text file like this into a compiled format called bytecode. And then you could run that bytecode by telling it what file it was you wanted to run. Notice that there's no .scala here. That would tell it, I'm not running this as a script. I am running this as uh, an application. And so the, the three ways of using Scala really are as the, the read evaluate print loop, the REPL, running scripts which are just running straight text files or doing a compile and then running it as an application and over the course of of the the book we will see all of these but we're going to start off with the with the first two um, and we will come back and visit those in later videos and so our next video will move on to chapter three and we will uh, start actually typing in some Scala and beginning our real steps into programming.